The Heber Valley Railroad's Haunted Canyon Train, a Halloween activity for the family every Friday and Saturday in October. This next topic affects hundreds and hundreds of Utahns. We're talking about domestic violence. And if it isn't happening to you, it may be happening to someone that you love. Dr. Stephen Mobley is here, ABC4's health expert. And this is a topic that you wanted to talk about. It's near and dear to your heart. Tell us why. It really is. I've, I've been involved in domestic violence in one way or another for over a decade. It started back in 93 in medical school. And now, as a facial plastic surgeon, one of the main charitable focuses of my medical specialty is to provide pro bono care to any woman or man who's been a victim of domestic violence. And October is, among many things, National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, so I think it's important to kind of bring it out into the light. It's one of those hush-hush topics no one wants to discuss, but we need to discuss it. And the statistics are pretty staggering when you look at them. One in four Utah families suffers from some level of domestic violence. One in four. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a straight, frightening statistic, and also you could extrapolate that every nine seconds a woman is being beaten. 75% um, of those beating injuries are to the face and neck area, so uh, there's a lot of hospitalizations and trips to the ER over domestic violence. I think people are pretty familiar with physical violence, but there are different types of abuse. Can you talk about those? That's a great point, Nisha. People only, only think of domestic violence as uh, someone beating their spouse, but it can be emotional violence, it can be coercive violence, it can be cruel talking to a person. It does not have to be physical beating. People can be in an abusive relationship and that abuse can simply be strong emotional abuse, being very cruel on a daily basis. I know that Oprah did a show earlier this week. Maybe you saw it. We were talking about it in our meeting yesterday because I couldn't change the channel. They actually had videotape of what was going on in these home life situations there on Oprah. And what I thought was interesting is after these wives even saw this on videotape, every single one of them opted to stay with their spouses. Why do women stay? The reasons women stay or the reasons women don't leave, to answer another way, are so complicated. First and foremost, when a woman leaves an abusive relationship, for the six month time frame that follows, they are at extremely high risk of injury and even death. That's a statistic. Secondly, it's financial. Often there's a financial incentive to stay in the relationship and they know if they leave, they may lose financial resources that may threaten the custody of their children. And finally, the third main factor is social stigma. Depending on the society in which you live or your neighborhood setting, there may be a very strong stigma against divorce or marriage separation. So you've got three factors often working against the victim who needs to get out of this violent relationship. I would think children would be a major factor. Child I mean, custody plays a, a major harder. role. Plays yeah. a major role. So what can you do? One thing we can do is, is help people. If we suspect there's domestic violence going on with someone that we care for, let them know that there are resources available. No one person is going to save the individual from the relationship, but you can provide a resource. Appreciate how complicated it is for the person in that relationship. They just can't walk away and leave. And there are also local community resources available as well. Are there precursors, maybe in a marriage, that you can see and spot this coming? If, if you're in a relationship, we've known by studying this problem socially that there's an escalating pattern of behavior. That means that it doesn't start off with physical violence in the beginning. That's the last stage. The early stages are abusive behavior, then threats, then displays of violence, such as punching your fist through a wall, then finally to the worst stage, which is the physical violence. So it's a, there's a clear pattern of escalating negative behavior that works its way towards the physical violence. Now we talk about, we're talking about women and we're talking about men. Is it more often that women are the victims of abuse? I know men are abused as well, but is that more often the case? Clearly, statistically, women are most often the victims, if nothing more than just men are physically larger than women as, as a general rule. Men are victims as well. It often can be more in the emo emotional sense on the men's side, but men can be victims of domestic violence as well. Okay, if someone's watching right now and you're thinking, this is happening to me or this is happening to someone I know, and for all those reasons or one of those reasons you mentioned, it's hard to get out of the situation. Should we mention some specific places they Absolutely. can go for right, help? Right here in the state of Utah, there are several things you can do. Our own Salt Lake YWCA is a good resource. They have patterns, they have programs set up for victims of domestic violence, so the Salt Lake YWCA would be a resource. The Utah Domestic Violence Advisory Council is also a local resource that provides direct care and support to people that want to get out of these relationships. And finally, at the national level, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence is also available, and all these numbers should be available, I think, on the Good Things Utah website. Yes, do go to our website. All this information is right there, abc4.tv slash gtu. You can link to all of these websites, and even just someone to talk to. 
I think in this situation. Sometimes that can be the first step. Would help. Dr. Mobley, thank you thank so you for much time. for Great coming by. Here. All right, up next, everybody, we are making a fun Halloween centerpiece. Angie's going to show us how. Stick around. And... Coming up on Good Things Utah, we'll chat with daytime soap star heartthrob Ted King. Plus...